thank you Lord Jesus thank you for showing us your grace again this morning we thank you for your everlasting mercies we thank you for your unchangeable grace and your magnified love for our lives you protect us as your children and as those you have created. In this morning, we are in your house. We are here to thank you for the great works that you have done for us. You have done great works for us. Those we know and those we do not know. Those we can and those we can't so we thank you may the glory return to you in the name of Jesus Amen Amen you may take your seats and may God bless you are you doing well church of God praise God we thank God for his grace upon our lives this morning and we are in his presence. It's such a blessing to be before him. In this month of thanksgiving, in this month of praise, in this month of speaking of his great works, there are times people leave always asking, but it's good that we take time to thank him. It doesn't mean we got all our prayers answered, but it's also good to take time to thank him. God has done great things for us, and we are rejoicing. Let's go to the word of God this morning. And today we are in the book of Esther. And the topic is replacing sorrow with joy. That's the word we've had this whole week. As we are still in the month of thanksgiving, I believe that God will help me and help you and replace our sorrow with joy. The world is in great sorrow. Because the world is going through difficulties. When we're talking about the world, we're talking about people living on this planet. World leaders are failing and they do not know what to do. Because what people plan isn't what happens. No one planned for the coronavirus, but it still happened. If there are people who planned for it, the majority, I'm sure, didn't know it was coming. I believe even those who planned the coronavirus also faced the impact of it. When the world was coming from coronavirus, Russia invaded Ukraine. The West and the East were greatly divided and started fighting. Russia, China, and Iran, and other African states, which are still silent on the matter, but still support Russia in the invasion of Ukraine. And while the world was still watching, coups started taking place everywhere in Africa. Problems became problems. 
ubufaransa mu gice kimwe bwafashaga ikrene bugira ikibazo guko inyungu zabo muri afrika zirahungabanye butakaza igihugu nka mali bagatakaza burkina faso na guinée none bagiye gutakaza na niger ni bibazo bikomeye France is at a crossroads. It was supporting Ukraine, but now it's losing its hold on African countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, and other countries in West Africa. Eh, mu buryo politike u France irimira hinduka cyane. Irimira hinduka cyane kuko abayitekereza ku France si ba makuru. Ni ni igice cy'abasirikare bakuru bakomeye ba general ba kera ni nibo bafite imitekerereze yo kuyobora u France. President haba gusa ngo umuntu we executive zo bakora nabo byabacanze byabacanze byabagowe French leaders French generals are now trying to find a way to salvage the situation because France Actually ni bayobora They are the one who are leading Macron muri Africa They are the ones who lead the the France influence the French influence in Africa Eh donc ibi bari sane yaguye So numbers are falling Urero eh ibihugu byo so some countries in West Africa are partnering with France and America behind the scenes to see if they can redeem Niger because Niger is the highest provider of uranium and uranium lights up France. So France is going to struggle with electricity if it can't regain Niger. Ariko none America nayo irashaka kuba muri Africa kuko barayirenganyije gye kirekira amasezerano yakera ko America idashobora gufata kuba muri Africa ubatangiye kuyirengagiza baraza nabo bwabo guko Africa ni kigagisigaye muri imyaka ya nyuma America is also coming to Africa because according to the previous charters America was excluded from having influence in Africa but now they are also coming because Africa is the last territory Nkurugero nakintu abanya America bagomba gukora tuvuge nko mu Rwanda atari ububirigi bubemereye n'u France none bakabona gukora yego hari lobbying na influence bakora bakabona kuza ariko nakintu nakimwe niyo mpamvu mutabona inganda z'abanya America muri Africa nuko bica iburaye niyo ugiye kugurana apo ngaka ga computer kagomba kuvibura yari apo Europe cyangwa se Mac Europe eh donc uko ni ko amasezerano yaba meze ariko abanya America wabonye ko babeshwe ubu nawo baraje uyu munsi sena ise yemera bati ambassadeur wacu ja muri muri Niger nta kibazo arafatwa nande ninde president umwakira ari abanya America bavose bati gendere tuzaba tubimenye yo ngiyo nyuma donc urumva ko mu byukuri hari 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 isiri mu bibazo the world, the world is shifting. America is coming to Africa because it formerly had to go through European countries that colonized African states, but now America is coming. The whole world has been shaken and it reaches where we are. Ikiwa baje muri ibyo nanone nuko nkubu ingabo za Senegal ni za Nigeria ndetse na na Benin ni batera bagatera Niger what is unfortunate is that Africans will fight Africans because if the ECOWAS army comes for Niger, it is Africans killing Africans. Deja ingabo ziri teguza ba Nigeria gutera Nigeria. Ikinda ba Nigeria ba hisaba agarika umuriro wa abo ba agaritse nibyo ba fasha ga Nigeria. Ubungu bari mu bibazo. Kana bona ba Nyafrika ba babaza abandi ba Nyafrika. Nigeria has stopped its support to Niger and Africans in Niger are suffering. Anyway, is any politics is a kuzijamo. Are you going to politics I'm not going through the details of the politics, but I'm trying to show you that dead politics kills us. Ikindi bibirongera bi affect inambara niba muri West Africa na duke twari dusigaranye birabibazo. And it's going to affect the whole continent. If there is a war in West Africa, it's going to trickle down to where we are. Ubwo simvuze ibindi bihugu byujuje imitwe y'abarwana byo bitazi ko bwakeye cyangwa bwije. I'm not talking about other countries that have armed groups that are fighting. Ibi ibi bazo bimo intagondwa zabisilamu. 
countries with Islamic terror groups. Countries like South Africa have no electricity because of corruption. Zambia is saying, please help me pay off the debt. And it's not the white people who use the debt. It's the Zambians. And the world is in labor pains because there are two forces. And I'll talk about those two forces. The forces that were in Haman and the force in Mordecai. Those two forces fight each other until one wins. Let's go to Esther. Let's go to the book of Esther, chapter 9. We'll begin with verse 1 to get the context. Bibiliya <laughs> Now in the 12th month, that is the month of Adar. Adar is like December according to the Jewish calendar. On the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. When you look at the book of Esther chapter 1 and we are still maintaining our topic replacing sorrow with joy when you read Esther chapter 1 the Bible says that in the days of Ahasuerus when you read the book of Esther chapter 1 verse 1 the Bible says that Ahasuerus was the one who reigned over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia or India to Africa. How did Ahasuerus lead all these provinces? This was the second kingdom that replaced the kingdom of Babylon. When God commanded Nebuchadnezzar to expand his kingdom, he brought in the Jews, the uh -uh. Israelites. He gave him the power to take in captivity the Israelites. That was the calling of Nebuchadnezzar. When we go back to history, when the Israelites left Egypt, God told them that they would never be enslaved anywhere else. And they understood the power of slavery. So God tells them when you get to the land that I show you. These are the things, these are the laws that you will abide by or else you will be taken into captivity. God gave them teachers who would teach them to uphold the laws. In the 12 families, he chose the family of Levi and told them you will teach and instruct these people my laws, my precepts and they will follow them. This was the duty of the Levites. And in the house of Levi, he chose 
was the family that would be of priests. In the house of Levi, there were three families. Amram, Gershom, and Kohat. God took the family of Kohat and he said, your duty when they do not follow what the Levites tell them, you will pray and I will forgive the people. And then in the house of Kohath, he chose the house of Amram. And in the house of Amram, he chose Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. He chose Moses to lead them, Aaron to be the priest, Miriam to be the prophetess. God was doing this to ensure that they would never be taken captive again or be refugees. This is how the, the ironic order functioned in Israel. So what happened? In the time of Eli, the sons of Eli didn't do the will of God. God left the house of Aaron because of the sin of the sons of Eli and moved to another Levite family where he chose Prophet Samuel. Samuel and you find some passages calling Samuel an Ephraimite but he wasn't he was from the Levite house but they were allowed to live anywhere in the land of Israel they lived in the land of Ephraim but not from the house of Ephraim of Joseph Samuel led them until the day they wanted a king and they didn't want Levites to leave them. That's when they started having problems. When they asked for a king, God was offended. Because God was looking at the future and Saul came and he sinned against God David came and he pleased the Lord Solomon came he didn't please God as his father but because of the covenant between David and God God bore up with him till his son Jeroboam who had a problem with Rehoboam Israel was divided some went to the north, others went to the south. Two groups were born out of one nation. Some were two families and the other ten families went to the north. The two families that remained with David which was Judah and a part of Benjamin and the other ten families moved to the north and they were called the Ephraimites some places in the Bible God will call Ephraim his son which is the ten families Israel so the ten families were taken into captivity because they had started engaging in idol worship. They were taken. They, were taken. they went to foreign lands. But God protected the house of Judah and Benjamin. And prophets like Jeremiah, who was the last prophet, was a prophet of lamentations, praying for the house of Judah and Benjamin because he was a Benjamite. 
Isaiah came before Jeremiah. He was from the house of Amos Judah. Amos was from the house of Judah. He lived in the mountains of Tekoa across Jerusalem. Their job was to warn those who remained and say the ten families were taken and they will not come back. And they still ignored the warnings, but the prophet kept prophesying, prophesying. The last prophet who remained was Jeremiah in the two houses. God would say, because of David, I do not want you to be taken captive. Please return to me. Pray. Do not worship other gods. Why is the land full of idols? Why do you sin against me? Please return to me. I beseech you to return Jeremiah to me. Jeremiah would wake up in the morning up to the noon and he would speak even in the night. One day he said, God, I am tired. Anyway, the king of that time was King Zedekiah. When they came to take King Zedekiah, this is what God did. He took a faraway king, Nebuchadnezzar, who led the Assyrian Empire. Ashuri, Yerimo, Yerimo, Syria, Yerimo, Tirikia. The Assyrian Empire had the Iran, Iraq, Turkey, and Syria territories. That whole territory was called Babylon. God sent Nebuchadnezzar. Go and take them from their land. But he didn't give him an evil heart to hurt them. He said, go and bring them as captives. They will leave their land. They need to feel the pain. Nebuchadnezzar went and brought them. And he blessed some of them. He said, get for me young men and we will teach them and they will be integrated in our society, in our culture. That's how people like Daniel and his friends were raised to levels of prominence. And when Nebuchadnezzar saw the hand of God upon him, blessed as he was, that's when he said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, am a great king. When he was moving by the veranda of his palace, he saw Babo and said, the Babylon I've built with my hands. And he reached he reached the point where he started slowly by slowly torturing the Israelites. But God had allowed him to do it. But when he saw that he had brought Israel captive, he said, let me bring even other nations. That's how he went to other lands. And God said, Nebuchadnezzar, I sent you to Israel only. I didn't ask you for other lands. So I will strike you. That night, God took him to the forest and he would feed. He would feed like animals. He spent seven years feeding. There was no one reigning in the land. He had and his son, Eva Modok, is the one who took over in those seven years. After seven years, when he was eating like cows, he said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, when 
knowledge or wisdom came back to me when a conscience came back to me I recognized that God is the most high Nebuchadnezzar was restored humbled when they, when they asked him where he was coming from he said God is great be quiet and Nebuchadnezzar was later on replaced by a faraway king from the land of Persia they came that night they took over Babylon they took it from them. That's how the king of Persia comes in. Persia is specifically in Iran. And Iraq is where Nebuchadnezzar came from. But King Ahasuerus comes from Persia. In that time when he came, he went and took over other places and people. The king of Persia, the Bible calls him a horse that runs with wings. He was very fast. He would take territories. That's how he took land from India to Ethiopia. And he reigned over 127 provinces. S kingdoms. He took them over. And it is against this backdrop that we find the family of Mordecai and Esther living in Shushan, which was the capital city of Persia. In this time, it is in this time, let me tell you, the king of Persia was different from the king of Babylon. The king of Persia he would, dis, he would take the people from a land, destroy it, and then migrate another people different from the one that lived in that land. Except those who would hide in holes. The king of Persia would ensure that everyone was a stranger in a different land. He would destroy land, take out the people, and bring other people in that land. That's when many families were taken. That's where, the, that, that's where there was the family of Haman. Haman, Haman, Haman was an Amalekite. He wasn't a Persian. They had also been taken in captivity. But Haman was quick to integrate himself in the society, in the culture, until he became a powerful man in the land of Persia. For the Israelites to leave Egypt, it had to take 10 plagues for them to leave Egypt. And therefore, for the, for the Jews to survive in Persia, ten sons of Haman had to die. And for every time that God wanted to save Israel, there had to be a sacrifice of ten people or ten plagues would take place. When the Israelites left Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea. 
the first time that people who met them, the no people who met them it was the Amalekites who met them. Mutambuka, they said, if you move, we will kill you. And they said, give us way. They refused to give them way. They had survived Pharaoh. They had survived the Red Sea. When they crossed in the wilderness, the Amalekites who were used to the desert, the Israelites had lived in Goshen. They didn't know how to fight. Sons and daughters who were spoiled. Except those who were enslaved for the 80 years while in Egypt. Point of notice. The Israelites didn't live in, in, in slavery for 430 years. No, they lived in slavery for 80 years when Moses was born. And God called Moses when he was 80. So it is two generations. A generation is 40 years, 40 years. But the others didn't know anything about pain. So the day they crossed, they met the Amalekites. When they met the Amalekites, they refused them away. Who are the Amalekites? The Amalekites were their brothers. They come from the house of Esau. And others come from the house of Jacob. They were brothers. We will not fight with you. We are the house of Jacob, the house of Israel. And it, it was a nation. No, it, it wasn't a nation yet. They were of the house of Israel. The sons of Jacob. The sons of Esau. Then they met the sons of Esau. And the sons of Esau said, you will not go to the promised land. Because of the offense of Jacob and Esau. They fought. The Amalekites were accustomed to the wilderness. And they struck them. When they struck them, Moses went to the mountain. And Moses normally performed miracles, but that day he had to pray because it was a war between brothers. Be very careful when brothers fight. When they fight over witchcraft, over plots of land, be very careful. These are wars that will totally destroy people. If you hear a parent, has sat his children or the wife and said, be careful when it comes to my brother. This is a war that will never end. When when brothers fight and one brother tells his sons, do not eat in my brother's house, only God will end that war. A wife and a husband can fight. And when the father chooses to turn the children against their mother and says, your mother is bad, your mother is wicked, as a parent, you're creating an offense in children and you will never heal that. 
na mushiki wa meza cyane nyina nuko bameze iyo abana bazi ko nyirakura ari umurozi dushobora kwibakura or when a woman brings her children and starts telling them your father is a terrible man his sisters are terrible women your grandmother is a witch you are building a muri protege ari kuri muri cyabo wabyaye you think you are protecting yourself but you are actually destroying your children. Do not tell your children that their grandmother your mother is a witch. Live with her witchcraft on your knees as you pray but do not be with your children yourself. Most errors that we are dealing with come from the things we are telling our children or what we have been told ourselves. Umwana udashobora gutaha ubukwe bwa mubyara we. Ntata ubukwe bwa muri umuntu we kwa se wabo ngo ya ngo bataturoga. Uri muri ubaka iyihe societe. Uri ubaka uruherugo. When, when children cannot attend their cousins weddings because of the words they've been told what society are we building what nation is it uvuga rukubesha wazabikizwa niki ko ruru banza ruzakujyaho no mwijuru uzarusangaye what if what you're saying is a lie this is a judgment that is waiting for you in heaven do you believe that all the dreams you have are true and right or oh, you say i dreamt that he was chasing me she was chasing me then they are a witch do you think it is spiritually divine do you believe our prophets who tell you watch out? The spirit of God is not divisive. You hate divisive. Because when you are divisive, they brought a woman and asked Jesus that she should be stoned and Jesus called her my daughter. So every person you call a witch, every person you hate, actually God loves them. There are many mistakes that have been made which have hindered people from entering their promises. So when Moses went to pray, when he raised his hand, he had left Joshua to fight. And the arrow of Joshua was powerful. And they cried out, we have overcome the Amalekites. When he put his hand down, they wailed. When he raised his hand, the Israelites of again, he understood that the formula was to raise hands in prayer. Aaron and who held his hand. Aaron was his brother. Who was his, his brother? Miriam. The husband of Miriam. They raised hands the whole day until they destroyed the Amalekites and others fled. God told Moses write it in the book. When you reach in Canaan never leave an Amalekite because they refused way for my people to enter the Many battles you fight are people you have hindered from entering promises because of your words because of your false dreams you turn people evil yet they did nothing I promise you before God there is a place you will not enter there is a place you will not reach The things you have not seen and experienced yourself do not proclaim because you will hinder people from entering the promises and God will make you pay for it. Israel, let me rush the Israelites get to Canaan. When they reached in Canaan, the day King Saul was a king, God said, first mission for you, Saul, destroy all the Amalekites. I do not want to see an Amalekite survive. 
destroy them because they stopped you from entering your promises. Saul calls the soldiers. They went to fight. When they reached the battle, they had big cows. They had big goats. They had sheep. He said, now look. Wait, let's not kill for now. First bring the cows and the goats. Also bring the big cow. A, a cow that just had calves. Bring, bring the cows. Their king Agag came. And he said, look, I will not kill you. Come. Come. Give us the cows. I will not kill you. God in heaven so, tore the agreement he had with the kingdom of Saul. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel comes. He didn't, he didn't hear the voice of God. He heard the bleating of sheep. What is happening? There is the bleeding of sheep. Where are they coming from? Saul. The soul. Samuel rushed to see what happened. Because where he lived in Rama, it was not far from Saul's place of Benjamin. He lived in the land of Benjamin. He comes. Say, Saul, what happened? I'm hearing sheep and lambs. What's happening in my ears? No, no, say. Why are you sacrificing? Are you a priest? He said, you delayed and I started giving sacrifices. Eh? What? Are you a priest? When was the house of Benjamin a house of priests? If you... If you, uh, you would have given better sacrifices, but not the cows from the Amalekites. And he said, I think the Lord would love these sacrifices, so I gave them. Saul, Saul Benjamin. was from the house of Benjamin. He had the mission to destroy the Amalekites. Ooh. Wow, wow. He failed in the mission. So Saul tell, Samuel tells Saul the sin of disobedience equals the sin of witchcraft. Now God prefers obedience than the fat that you're offering. God is greatly offended. Samuel left. Saul rushed after him and took his garment as a priest and Samuel turned and a part of his garment was torn and it stayed in the hands of Saul. Samuel turned and looked at him as, as, as this part has come from my garment, God has snatched your kingdom from you. Samuel worked only for two years. Saul worked for two years. Saul worked for two years. And for the remaining 38 years, the Spirit of God was not on him. That's when he would lose his mind and they would have to bring David to sing for him. The spirit of God departed from him but he kept his title. Be careful when it comes to our titles. Some people have titles but with no grace. 
Do not see people because they are called prophet and they once prophesied for you and you chase them. Be careful to find out if they are still connected with God. I am a titre du fit. Because these titles we have. Pasite, pastor, apotre, apostle, prophet, prophet evangelist. evangelist they could be just on our certificates but not in our lives and among you there are those who had those titles but they never received certificates why they obey the Lord they fear the Lord so Saul was removed he was removed. Okay, then David became king. Umami. Became king. Umami. When David became king, Baramanga. they hated him. Inzuya Sauri. The whole house of Saul Iramanga. hated him. Nabo. They fought him. They had a great soldier called Abishai. He was a great fighter. David they fought and fought but this man was powerful and 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 the Kuchimushaka Agahinda kenshi cyane kwa zahorera muri umuna wa Hasaeli batuma kuri avuneri kumvikana ahageze aramubwira ati ariko tujye hanze harakamisha kuganiriza yowaba mujana hanze bibahagaze amukubita inkota munda avunera rapfu apfuye Dawudi ararira cyane ngo ushobora kwica indi kwa rika avuneri gute bati bene seruya abana bamushikiye bati mwarasaze ibi bintu mukora ni ibiki muri make just to summarize. Anyway, Saul was removed. I, I refuse to bring the book of Esther before explaining the whole context behind the book of Esther, but the house of Benjamin and the house of Judah reconciled after great battles that happened between them. But there was the elder brother of Saul who had refused to forgive David. He said, they have taken our kingdom, our throne. He was called Shemai. Shemai, Shemai. Shemai, Shemai. 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 What happened? The day Absalom chased away David. That's the day. She may came to insult him. You dog. 
You have made yourself a king and taken the throne from us. He insulted him and he took stones and would throw them. them. And he would take dust and throw it at him. Joab said and his soldiers told him let us kill him. David said no. This is not who I am. I will kill people that we are fighting against, not but just any random person. And I know the reason behind this. If my son has chased me, why will the others not disrespect me? Leave him. God has allowed it. <laughs> Let us kill him. He refused. David came, he became king. And they lived with Shimei. He forgave him. It is Solomon who dealt with Shimei. He's the one who put in conditions that he wouldn't cross Kidron from Jerusalem. That's how Shimei lived. So Shimei in that time gave birth to to the father of Mordecai and the father of Esther. In that season, had David killed Shimei, Mordecai, Mordecai and Esther wouldn't have been born. If they hadn't been born, they wouldn't have fought Haman. Haman Who was Haman? His father was called Hadak. And his grandfather was King Hadak. The king that Samuel killed. The one that Saul refused to kill. Every time good and evil will meet in front. When you face good things, expect bad things on the way as well. When you meet bad things, also expect good on the way. Your life has both. If you meet bad things, don't think God has abandoned you. And if you meet good things, don't think you're done with bad days. When you're still, when you're still immature in the faith and you meet bad things, you cry out. But if you're mature in the faith, you know it's seasonal. When you... When you have challenges in your life, you look out for prophets in Kigali. And when you have good <laughs> things, you go to Dubai. <laughs> God is always amazing. Others, when they meet challenges, they come to church. When they are blessed, they come to church because that's where they meet their God. So this is the story. The family of Shemai eventually found itself in Persia. You remember the story of Vashti and everything else How Esther was chosen to be the queen. But in the time of Esther and Mordecai, Hagar was Haman was the second in the land. Haman. Haman was the second in the land. He was the second. He was the second in command. Mordecai now. Mordecai was just a watchman by the palace. The Jews who had been taken captive, they had three jobs. They were watchmen. And others would be explainers of dreams. The third, they would be the ones who would serve the king wine. 
Because history states that the person who would give wine to the king was a man who was a man who was this person who would serve wine to the king had to be so trusted and they didn't have so many relatives they couldn't be bought to poison the king. They would have to first investigate before they would choose who would be the person to serve wine to the king because kings wouldn't hold the cups by themselves. They had to be served. Young Jewish men would serve wine in the palaces like Nehemiah or people who would cook for the king. They had to be foreigners who were not connected to anyone in the land. And before the king would drink wine, his wine, his wine dresser would have to first taste the wine. They would wait for a few minutes to see if he doesn't die, and then the king would drink. This is how it happened. language. That's why they would have to test the body language of the people who served wine. They were expected to be happy, to be jubilant. If you came otherwise, they would think you have poisoned the king. That's why the day Nehemiah served the wine and the king noticed that his countenance had fallen, he, he was supposed to die. Others were watchmen. Like Zerubbabel, who was a governor once they returned, he used to be a watchman. So this was the job Mordecai did. But Mordecai it was beyond. He hadn't been given the job. He would just spend the night by the gates of the palace to know about Esther. From the day Esther became queen, Mordecai moved and went to live by the gates of the palace to always listen in. And the other watchmen would send him to run errands. Till the day they trusted him. And they plotted to kill the king. Once they plotted to kill the king, they told him the plot. But they didn't know that his daughter was in the palace. But all those are plans of God to save us. So also Esther would pay another man to go and tell Mordecai what would be happening in the palace. Mordecai also sends a warning to Esther that it is being plotted Esther to kill the king. Umami. The king tells the Esther tells the king. The king investigates Asanga, and finds that it's a true ba story. Ba 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 ga they mo. took the men who were by the gate and they killed ba them. Ba After killing them, it, it, it was written in the books of records. Ba and, and he remained as an unknown watchman. Every time Haman would come out, all the other watchmen would rise and bow down. But because he was a Jew, Mordecai wouldn't bow. Because they are not allowed to worship anyone else. And Haman said, who is that person? He found out he was a Jew. 
I am an Amalekite from the house of Esau. He is from the house of Jacob. They, they are disrespectful. No other people are disrespectful as them. But he said, this is a small problem. He goes to the king and says, king, I'm bringing together all the 120 provinces. I will have them collect taxes for your treasury. But one thing I ask, there is a small group of people they are called Jews from a land a small land called Israel do not touch small people that you do not know their origins when you find a goat on the road, do not attack it because there is a man who is watching over his goat. He who watches over Israel does not sleep or slumber. Yes, Praise Jesus. Oh. Amen. Amen. Haman comes and says, Now. Can we decree to kill them? The king says they despise. You know kings receive any report they are given. They accept it. If people come and report you to the king, the king has no time to investigate. He has so many things to do with but he doesn't know that Esther is a Jew. <laughs> but okay. And then they, say, they release the decree. It was written by Haman. It was, it was signed in, the the in my name, Ahasuerus. The most difficult group of people living in all the land. On the 14th of Ada. Every person Wherever they are, you will kill them. If they are your neighbors, you will kill them. This is decreed by the king. This is where we read Esther 9. Now in the 12th month, that is the month of Ada, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had, had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred, in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. They, they gave the day, the day to kill them in the month to kill them. Do you know what happened? Mordecai sent this to Esther and told Esther what was happening. And Esther said, I haven't gone to the palace courts and, and according to the law we are not allowed. But if you, if you go and the king stretches his scepter, you will leave. If he doesn't, you will die. So let's fast for three days, no drinking, no eating. On the third day, I will overpass the decree of the king. If I die, let me die. If I live, let me live. But they took time to discuss this with Mordecai. On the third day, Esther went. The king couldn't sleep that night. When the king couldn't sleep, almost Daybreak. He says, go into my library and check for the books. The first book they brought is the book of Mordecai. With the news of Mordecai. They plotted to kill the king and the Jewish watchman gave the news about this. When it was investigated, it was found to be true. Esther, when Esther came, 
he stretched his scepter towards her. And he said, do you want half of the land? I'll give it to you, Esther. She says, no. What do you want? She says, I want to have breakfast with you and Haman. And I have cooked. Only that. She says, I will say it after eating. They went, they had breakfast. They had breakfast. And the king says, what do you want, Esther? She says, can we have breakfast again tomorrow? They come back for breakfast. And Haman goes to his house and tells his wife, I am very powerful. Even the queen herself only chooses to have breakfast with me. Darling, I eat, but I don't really enjoy the meal because of the Jewish watchman who doesn't bow down for me. The whole world will rise, but he refuses to bow down. And the woman says, you're the ruler. Kill him. Darling, you should sleep. Why should you be worried? Just destroy the Jew. But okay. But the half is the Greek word for the Jew. You can't hang him on the Jew. So Haman says, "Build gallows, and you hang him on the gallows." No, we're not going to do that. So Haman comes back. I just want to say, "I'm going to hang him." Big is the yoga toy. I'm not a petit déjeuner. Avance. He comes to tell the king that they pushed the breakfast time so that he ensures that Mordecai is hung. Hallelujah! <laughs> And Haman says, I will enjoy my breakfast after telling you to hang the Jewish watchman by the gallows. But there are people you just can't consume like that. There is a, a piece of meat that is not edible. When you eat it, you die. There are people who see that piece of meat even though they are hungry, they will not eat it. Uh, Deers, there is a way when you chase an antelope or a deer, it has hormones, it releases, and it releases these hormones so that when you kill it, you don't eat the meat. That's why hunters surprise it. Because when you, you, uh, you attack it before it sees you, it will not have time to release the hormones. But if you chase it, it releases the poison, the poisonous hormones. When you kill it then, and you eat its meat, you will die. Or oh, it's not enjoyable. That's the defense mechanism of those animals that live in the forest. So the Christians you see here, people who have prayed, people who love God, people who fear God, they release poison when you chase them. Saints have poison. Paul, Paul said this. That we have the fragrance of Christ that destroys sinners. It, it, it is death for the unbelievers. Those people who will torture you because of your faith, the day you will release your poison, they will not survive. This is what happened for Mordecai. Haman comes right, and finds the king outside. And says, Haman, 
Before he said what he wanted to say, the king says, what does the king do for the people he loves most? The he loves most? But he had read the book. And he wondered, what happened to Mordecai? And they said, he just lives by the palace. Haman Haman comes in. What happens to the person the king loves? Haman thought it was him. If you were Haman, this is not But you are not Haman, you are Mordecai. He said, it must be me. I'm going to declare good things for myself. He said, that robe you're wearing, they will wear it. Your signet ring, they will wear it. And the horse that the king uses for special occasions, that's the one they put them on. And the crown that the king will wear on special occasions. They give the and they lift him and put him Hallelujah. And they put him on the horse. Hanyuma. And then they look for another powerful man in the land. The Maybe the second. They will go throughout the city. Saying, this is what they do for the person God loves. The king loves. This is what they do for someone favored by the king. And they will scream. And the king says, I Bring more Mordecai. Let him sit on the horse. Listen, listen. All the things you say, do not leave anything behind. Hallelujah. 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 Eh. <laughs> Imagine if you were Haman. If, if you were Haman, you would be numb. Amurijeho. They put him on the horse. But there is the girl who's hung in his courtyard. He went before his house. When the wife saw that, last they checked, they were going to hang Haman. And now, Mordecai is on the horse, dressed like the king. And they say, Mordecai, the wife told the children anything to do with your father is done today. If he's losing before the Jew it's done. In brief when he Esther left Esther comes and says breakfast. <laughs> Would you eat that breakfast? But it was the law. It was the decree. He had to come. There are people who will be quiet quiet and who will speak at the right time. When he came, he knelt down before Esther. Esther was seated by the bed. He found Esther and fell in her legs. The king thought that he's he's doing something else to his wife. You have reached my wife. The moment he said that. Those who guard the king had come. They said he had even prepared the gallows to hang Mordecai. The king said, go and hang him there. Let me read this quickly. Okay. We're still in Esther 9. When the Jews 
Now in the 12th month, that is the month of Ada, on the, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. <laughs> ngo bafate abashaka kubagirira nabe nta muntu wabashaka kubabuza kuko amahanga yose ari yabatinye imana ni igwigitinyiro the jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of king Assyria to lay hands on those who sought their harm and no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all people maze abatware bibugu byose nibisonga by'umwami nabatware bintebe nabakoraga imirimo y'umwami batabara abayuda kuko muri dekai yari yabateye ubwoba nindi wabateye ubwoba muri dekai and all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Thus the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with the slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan, the citadel of the Jews killed the citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. Mwene Hamedata umwanzi wabayuda uko ari 10 barabica ariko nti bagira ico babanyaga Also passion Aba ngaba ndaza kubavugaho uze gutuninga kuri television yabo ndavuga kuri aba bandi 10 mu materaniro ya kabiri Also passion data Dalphon Aspatha Poratha Adalia Aridatha Pamashta Arisai Aridai and Vajizatha The 10 sons of Haman I'll talk about them in the second service then Esther said, if it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do again tomorrow according to today's decree and let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. Okay, Let's go to verse 20. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the provinces of King Assyrus. To establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar. As Hallelujah. As the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies, as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. 29. Nukumami kazi esteri umukobwa wande wamori dekai oh wande isi nariyasa ni raso hotere hey then Queen Esther the baza menyera soko bikorugu zako baza menyera nyoko kubikorugu zako familia ya wiza menyeka na kumiri miha mbayo zako. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the name of the father is mentioned because of the great works of the father. Purimu ni mgebura yoni ni na mafaranga mesh. Donke barafu ngo turagira fete itwa purimu. 
umunsi bari batugambane batugura none imana iratwibutse with Mordecai the Jew wrote with full authority to confirm the second letter about Purim. Purim is the plenty equaling to the, the lot or the taxes that they were supposed to give the king. The feast of plenty. And and Mordecai, verse 30, and Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth. So the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim and it was written in the book. Amen. Yo. Ten verse three. Okay. Esther ten verse three. Are we together? Wakabiri kumwami aserusi ninde wari muri uyu mwanya mbere none hagiye nde ngo kandi yaragize gute yarakomeye mu bayuda agashimwa na benese uko bangana agashaka irubwoko bwabo ibyiza kandi akajya bwira urubyaro rwe amahoro for Mordecai the Jew was second to King Ahasuerus and this position was formerly filled in with Haman and was great among the Jews and were received by the multitude of his brethren seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to all his countrymen. God, I thank you for your grace. It is you who replaces sorrow with joy. Pain will leave and peace will restore. Do it for the brothers and sisters here. I am praying for them to receive that miracle. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.